Welcome to Agent Noob everyone, and I'm super excited to share with you what's currently possible to cosmetically alter lighting in Age of Empires 4. It turns out that the engine has insane capabilities that were hidden from us all this time, and make sure you stick until the very end for some awesome lighting scenarios. So without getting too ahead of myself, let's dive right in. To start off, let me begin with what we instinctively already knew before the Essence Editor was made public to us. The average player may not realize this during a regular game, especially if they're playing on lower graphical settings, but we can easily see a few things if we make a time lapse to help our visualization. One, you'll realize that clouds actually cast a shadow on the ground and they also move like they would in real life. So we already knew that lighting in the game wasn't constant and it was possible to make things dynamic in the engine. Second, you could also even see the sunlight directly appear, which indicates that the clouds can momentarily disappear to allow the sun to cast harsher shadows on the map on a clear sky. But that's pretty much it. Due to the awful camera controls that Relic so adamantly refuses to change for us, we actually didn't know how the engine actually rendered all of this. Well, since we now have access to the editor and can actually move the camera to our heart's content, we can see that there actually are physical clouds on the map. Here's a low resolution screenshot from a modder. Those clouds were really moving around, but since we couldn't pan the camera freely in the game, we couldn't see them. What's more is that when you actually do zoom out further than what Relic allows you to, you'll realize how the map is lit overall as well. The fog on all current generated maps are obviously not tuned and optimized to zoom out this much, which is why you can't really see anything zoomed out from all the freaking fog. But what you can see are the light rays that pass through all that crap and how the map is being lit. Originally, I thought that the fog was a graphic setting that you could turn on and off, but we obviously couldn't do that in the game's settings. Well, it turns out that the fog is an actual asset in the map, just like trees, gold veins, rivers, and so on are, and each map can have more, less, or no fog at all depending on how you want to light it. Finally, we did get a glimpse of different lighting in a Norman campaign scenario in which we defend a siege, but I didn't think much of it at the time as I thought it was a one-off color grading and not really something to do with lighting. I was both right and wrong, so let's see exactly how lighting works now that we know what we know about the Essence Editor. Alright, now that we've covered what we already knew about the game's engine, let's explore the Essence Editor's capabilities when it comes to what Relic calls atmosphere. Now, there are some check marks regarding the sun, fog, and whatnot, but for some reason I couldn't get them to work. I'd like to believe that they're just presets that affect the actual parameters, so it could just be a bug given that the tool is in beta. Regardless, we can look under the hood and check what we can change. First things first, we have a drop down for time of day to be changed to night, dawn, day, and dusk. Once again, those didn't work for me as I believe they're presets that don't do anything yet. But at the very least, we know that the game's engine can pretty much mimic any time of the day in terms of lighting. When we scroll down, we can see that we can change the sun's diffuse color, its angle, the shadow intensity, the freaking orbit of the sun which is used to shift where it rises from and where it sets to, and much more. We can then see stuff around light rotation, wind direction, strength, and how it individually affects water. We can also change the exposure altogether as well as scattering, and the aforementioned fog with a whole slew of options. Furthermore, you can even change clouds, how they look, their density, thickness, and a billion other options to tune. One also great option here is the additional lighting options on the units themselves, called unit visibility. This is to help the player recognize units in the game easier if the map is darker than usual so it doesn't hinder gameplay, and you can adjust how much additional light you want to add to said units. And finally, you can make changes to the fog of war and overall color grading of the map to make things look a certain way, such as making it look more cinematic. Anyway, we don't have to go through each option and lever, the point is that there is a surprising depth and customizability when it comes to lighting overall, and I'm just shocked at how underutilized 90% of this was up until now. What's also beautiful is that you can actually see the lighting as a preview when you're at the map selection menu. You can clearly see which map is played at night versus those that have a golden hue and so on. Admittedly, the night preview could help a tad from a clarity perspective, but it's awesome to see that it is reflected in the previews of the maps nevertheless by default. Another great thing about the atmospheres is that it could be shared as a file called Atmosphere File. This means that a mod maker can make an atmosphere with great settings, lighting, fog, and so on, and share it with the broader community for them to utilize that atmosphere in their own crafted and generated maps, which is just fantastic for collaboration. That said, that's enough talking about settings. Let's now take a look at how tweaking the aforementioned looks like in the game's engine. Okay, let's have a look at a gorgeous sunrise. You should immediately realize a very stark shift in the mood of the map. It honestly even looks like a different game and, in my opinion, showcases the graphics of the map in much stronger light. Pun intended. 
One thing you will realize is how even the smallest assets in the game can cast detailed shadows behind them. Notice how the gulls flying over the river, which are simply cosmetics of the shorefish on water, cast a shadow on the building wall directly due to the angle of the sun. You'll also see the same effect on the Roost Knight's shadow behind him on the wall. The Stark shadows on the buildings themselves alone give them a whole different vibe altogether. You'll also see the archer standing in front of the sun having a shinier front of course. One thing I was surprised with was how accurately the color of the water shifted with lighting. I wish I could show you a better angle if the game allowed it, but the water looks even better if the camera tilted a bit lower to the ground. Here's another angle with the dock and the shadows of its roof, really nicely lit. And here's how it looks like zoomed out. I'm also pleased that the game isn't completely unplayable from a clarity perspective. Even though it's obviously not as good in terms of gameplay clarity as the default lighting, it's still perfectly playable. And stuff like unit lighting and shadows can be altered for further clarity, as mentioned. That's it, let me share with you some more amazing news. Lighting is not only rendered by the sun. The game's engine can actually render different lighting on different assets as well. Take a look at the torches here. Since they are behind a shadow cast, you can not only see them light up their immediate surroundings, but they also flicker like a real fire would alongside the fire animation. This basically means that expert modders, in theory, could figure out multiple different ways to light a map, which is amazing. And finally, perhaps one of the better shots you can take during a sunrise, look at how the individual leaves and branches of this tree is lit, and how they cast a shadow on the building behind it. Heck, leaves themselves cast a shadow on the leaves behind them. I can only imagine if Relic showcased more of this type of graphics instead of whatever the hell they used to to promote the game pre-release. And by the way, just in case you're wondering if this looks good just because I set up a scene for it, here's a typical start with the exact same lighting. You'd be lying if you told me that this doesn't look awesome, and in some way, looks like a more realistic start to the game. And finally, here's the map zoomed out so you can see how it looks like. I've disabled the fog so you can actually see the map, but you can add some more lighting details on top of what you see here. Once again, even though the shadows can be slightly distracting for some, it's perfectly playable and can be softened if need be. Okay, now that we've covered what only changing the angle of the sun could do, let me show you the same map with a few more parameters shifted. Now, you should have already realized that this is now a sunset instead of a sunrise, as I've changed the angle of the sun as did the shadow direction. More importantly, you'll also now realize a golden hue, and that's because I made the diffuse color of the sun more orangish to mimic the golden hour of a sunset. I'm not going to claim I got the color exactly right, but you can pretty much choose any color you want to suit your style. Although I do prefer the first map's shadows, you'll also see that the shadows here are much softer and less contrasty. One other thing that you'll realize is that I've maxed out the wind. Now the reason why it looks so silly here is due to the lack of movement in everything but the foliage and the trees. Units capes or clothes do not get affected by the wind, nor does the shipwreck that I added just to test. Hence, it doesn't really sell the fact that there's a hectic gale going on, and I recommend you folks to avoid messing around with the wind speed too much until they somehow let it affect all other things in the game. But yeah, yet again, just by pulling a few levers here and there, we got another shift in mood. Speaking of moods, let's move on to my attempt of recreating a moonlit night. The minimap definitely needs a revamp because it's too dark with these settings, but honestly, I still think that the game is playable with this lighting as well. Obviously, this is just my quick attempt at this as I have to tweak a few more things, but I think it still looks great and realistic, especially with the amazing sound design of the crickets and the lighting of the torches adding life and realism to it. That said, I wish that the torches lit their surroundings a tad more in this lighting, though I feel like some modders might be able to tweak torchlight in the future as well. More on that later. The gold veins and the stone outcroppings also look both clear and nice in this setting. One other quick comment that I have to make is that the weapons have a different lighting system for clarity reasons in the game. Though I believe we should be able to tweak this as well even though I couldn't find it myself. But yeah, does this overall capture an atmospheric night without sacrificing gameplay too much? Absolutely! I can already see a ton of custom scenarios and maps taking advantage of this. Here's another try with a more bluish hue, as well as some fog to add to the atmosphere. And you can see the torches of the barracks in this lighting as well. That said, remember my previous point about the torch lighting being potentially moddable? I wanted to test a theory. Are the torches somehow a part of the building asset itself and it just colors the building's wall only? Or does the game actually treat it as a real light source that could potentially light other things in the game? Well, I built a blacksmith in the middle of nowhere to test it out. The reason why I built a blacksmith is due to the light coming out of its furnace, of course. We already have a good start. We can clearly see the furnace lighting a significant area around it already, and the flickering of the light looks great as well. That said, if my original theory is correct, that light should reflect off of the units that come close to it, and give them that yellowish-orange hue from the fire's light. Hence, would it work on the sheep? I'll be damned, it actually does, and it looks pretty good too. Here's a closer look for you to see the flickering of the light and how it diffuses off, as the head of the sheep is further away from its lower body. On that same token, this works on the scout as well, and by extension pretty much any other unit in the game. 
Once again, you can see the back of the horse lit up properly as we can't see any details on its face since it's under the shadow of the blacksmith, but when we do turn the horse to face the fire, we can see its face again. I don't know, I might be exaggerating here, but I love little details like this. Not just aesthetically, but because it pretty much confirms that the modders will potentially be able to use this in so many ways, such as an army carrying torches for lighting in a minigame for example. And finally, to wrap things up, this also applies to the main source of light as well. As you can see, the visibility of the face of the villager depends on the angle of the light hitting it, so it could be half lit, fully lit, or none at all. Honestly, good job developers, good job Relic. The lighting is very solid through and through, regardless of what you throw at the engine. Well, that should cover the fundamentals of lighting in Age of Empires 4. I have to say that the more I explored the editor, the more I realized how underutilized the capabilities of the engine was, and how little customization the current UI of the game allows without any mods. Hopefully with the Season 1 update, this should change for the better, as there is so much potential here to play around with that it's not even funny. And if you've enjoyed this type of video and would like to see more of this type of content, be sure to like and subscribe to not miss out on any future videos. As always, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to light your crafted maps properly, and see you all in the next one.